Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so pleased and so happy that we have with us here this evening, Ms. Peggy King Jordan. I'm so honored to be here on this campus. This is amazing theater. So well, thank you very much for having me. Um, this has been a long time coming, hopefully, and um, it really is meant to be a film that is a call to action, call to action globally. Um, the intent it was to screen a documentary, uh, A Story of Bones, by uh, Joseph Curran and Dominic DeVere uh, about the story of essentially two women of color on opposite sides of the Atlantic who are trying to preserve and um, memorialize a burial ground in the South Atlantic on the island of St. Helena, which is considered a middle passage burial site of enslaved Africans who were retrieved from slave ships that were en route to the Americas. And they were retrieved by the British Navy uh, and buried, those that didn't survive, were buried in a valley called Rupert's Valley on the island. And right now it is uncelebrated, unmarked, and continually has development adversely impacting the site. Uh, and so we're trying to slow that down and stop it and to memorialize uh, the individuals globally. You lending your services or community service to the community. And in New York, it's such a big place you can get so lost in it. And it was during the time, or as I found out more information about the African burial ground and to be two blocks uh, south of the site and then find myself sitting in rooms with federal, the federal government appointees by the president of the United States, who basically their intent was, now, you know, we'll put a little flag up and we're moving forward. And there was a sense of mission to, um, to challenge that, not really knowing how to do it, but to challenge that. I did not know about Rupert's Valley. Uh, uh, and, and that's very telling. Before I got to this island, we were actually communicating by email and by um, Skype at the time. And then after advising, because they reached out to me and Nina reached out to me because of this whole history, I didn't know anything that went, she wrote, you know, and the, and the filmmakers were even writing to say St. Alina, I thought they were talking about South Carolina until I realized some things that they were writing about didn't make sense. Um, and I realized, you know, Googling that island, you had to magnify almost 10,000 times to find it in the South Atlantic. Um, but we actually communicated over the course of a year uh, when I finally said to them, I would like to go to the island because there was this um, part of what they were saying. And I, I say the bedrock of doing any kind of memorialization having to do with African burial grounds, and I work on several throughout the United States and abroad, and also working on one in, as, or several in St. Eustatius, a Dutch Caribbean island as well. The bedrock of those, that kind of work is the canning. I mean, you have to, you have to build a groundswell of community support, right? And so what kept coming back is that there was this fragmentation within the community, and I felt like, well, they don't know what they're doing, I need to go and I need to meet with the community. So when I did come to the island, I met one-on-one -on -one with the governor, the woman that you saw in her office to talk to her about why the government wasn't doing anything. Um, I met with the community. I was invited to talk about the African burial ground and how we did the work. Um, but going on that site and when you see me say, this is huge. I never imagined how massive, even in this spell, you really don't, you really don't see how massive this burial ground is. I mean, and we're talking very near the surface that these, these burials are. Um, and people talked about that growing up there and, and, you know, everybody knowing that there, there were remains. But you know, when you go into communities and and the film, I, I, I have to say this, the film, uh, sometimes we get mixed reviews, 
there's some people, the government, of course, takes, takes the position that we're indicting the community. And we are in no way indicting the community. We know who the culprit is. So you mean it's very clear that the government, all of the funding for that island comes out of London, right? That's how that airport got built for, from a, its development. And at one point, you hear a gentleman say, oh, we get 65% of our funding from the government to just cover just what they need. But they're still always going to have to need to get more. And that's what happens in a lot of the territories when you talk about other countries, you know, doing this. So there isn't enough political will right now to do what needs to be done. It is it is a burial ground um, that is upwards of 10,000 individuals where you saw those big tanks. That's the burial ground, all of it, and all the land around it. Um, and in the, these are enslaved Africans, were enslaved Africans that were retrieved from the hulls of slave ships. And the other piece that isn't covered historically here is you don't talk about who those slave ships belong to. A lot of those slave ships came out of New York. It came out of the United States. One of the biggest, and that's why I'm saying that this is a global site. We're, 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 you know, we're speaking to the British government. But we had an American consulate on the island at the same time. Where do these Africans were being pulled off of American ships. And when the British and the Americans had an agreement such that if the Brits arrested Americans who were engaging in the trade, they would hand them over and say, okay, you deal with them. If they were from somewhere else, you know, Portugal or anywhere else, they better try them on the island. And one of the biggest trials in history happened in Boston for an American slave ship called the Orion that was built in the Northeast. It was financed out of New York, and it was a ship that was specifically built to hold a thousand Africans with the idea that there would be some attrition on the way. And at least 895 were retrieved and on that island, right? And then those who didn't stay went on. The only way off the island was to get on other ships that were heading to the British Caribbean. So they never went back. They were never liberated African people. They even lit it they went on. If they died, most of, you know, a lot of the records say that um, what would happen is they'd float a ship in the harbor send a, a physician out to the ship because there were diseases and things like that. And then they would take those uh, bodies. People did not survive that middle passage and they buried, they were buried in the valley. Initially, they threw them overboard, but they were washing up along the shore. So they stopped that practice and they brought them in and buried them. And those that survived, you saw that they were in these makeshift tents and they were there. They were not permitted to go to Jamestown or wander around free. They were not liberated in that sense. Um, and then if they left the island, they went on to other British territories. What I hope from the film is that the people who are here to watch it are inspired either to act, it's a call to action, to try and um, talk about the importance of this site, or in fact, look within their own communities and talk about the importance of sites that may be in their own communities, African burial grounds that have gone neglected, that need to be um, reclaimed and, uh, and celebrated.